I'm Bill Thompson, Extension Economist from San Angelo, Texas. And I'm Joe T. Farmer from uh, Childress, Texas, and I'm in here talking to Bill today about these budgets I heard about, these spreadsheet budgets that he has. Uh, Bill, what good are these spreadsheet budgets? Why, why should I even mess with them? We can use these production, these budgets for any number of different reasons. Uh, the primary use is probably for calculating break-even prices for our marketing plans. Uh, we can also use them to look at our, our profitability uh, at various price levels. You can also use it to put together uh, or, or to assess your, your credit needs for the upcoming year. Um, there aren't date time stamps on, on these budgets, but you can also use them to assess your cash flow needs for the, for the coming year. Okay, well, how do, how do I find these things? How do I find these budgets? These are on the uh, Department of Ag Economics website, uh, which is agecoext.tamu.edu. Under the resource tab, down you'll see where it says crop and livestock budgets up to. And we typically look at them by extension district, or it's easier to find them from that area, depending on what part of the state you're you're in. Well, I'm from the Rolling Plains, uh, so that go. must be District Three. Let's start with the tw the most recent budgets that are out there, 2016. And here's your list of, of available production budgets. So uh, these are broken down by forage crops, field crops, other parts of the state will have some horticultural crops, and we've got some livestock enterprises that we've got budgets for as well. Today we're going to go down and build your own uh, production budget for the uh, for your your cotton production. All right, Bill. I've got this spreadsheet up. Uh, what what does all this mean? How okay. do I get around? When, when you down, hit that uh, build your own budget, a, a Excel workbook with all of the Rolling Plains production budgets was downloaded for you. Uh, what you see here are the you can, you can access each of those budgets by clicking on the on the link on the main screen there, or you can find the the tab at the bottom part of the screen. Uh, let's go look at dry land cotton. Okay, good. You know, you know, uh, Bill, I've got about a half section over on the Smith place that I'm putting some cotton in on. So how would I uh, fill this budget out for that? Okay, the, everything you see on maroon there is the maroon is is your sign that it is looking for some producer input so let's start at the top and let's put in uh, on that uh, title for this budget and let's call it the smith smith place and let's the smith place and let's categorize this as a cash rent budget And here you want to enter your 320 acres. All of our production budgets uh, are, are very unit specific. When we're talking crop and horticulture budgets, our units are typically going to be acres. When we're looking at some, most of our livestock budgets, the, the units will be head. And some of our sheep and goat budgets are actually done on an animal unit basis to allow us to compare them back to say a cow calf operation. Well Bill that Smith place won't make 480 pounds it'll only make about 380. Okay so on that your on your quantity uh, column right there enter the 380 pounds that your, uh, which is your expectation for that particular place and how many how much uh, produced seed cotton seed do you expect to generate? Oh probably about 2.8 ton. All right here you get to enter your price expectations. Uh, the extension economists put these budgets together in the fall of each year for publication sometime after the first of the year 
these prices are subject to change in the in the in the, as time passes. So, what are your price expectations? Well, I produce the best cotton around, so I'm going to get 64 cents. I know for that, but that's a little high, isn't it, for uh, for seed cotton for seed? Okay, so we'll use your 185. I think those yeah. are acceptable. At this point, our production budget is broken down into... Um, Wait a second, Bill. What's these lines here for? Okay. We've got some additional, uh, additional blank lines there. Uh, many crops will have secondary or uh, additional income items that could be listed there. Uh, cotton is a good example of a, of a crop that has two sources of income, the lint and then the produced seed. Uh, if we were looking at a cow-calf operation, we would have uh, the calf sales in addition to some cull cows or cull bulls. Uh, if we were talking wheat production, we would have the, the grain produced for sale in addition to possibly some, some wheat pasture grazing income. All right, that makes sense. So what's this uh, variable cost? Okay, the rest of the budget, we start to break down some of our costs into variable costs and fixed costs. We'll get to the fixed cost here in a minute. Our variable costs are broken down into uh, some some direct costs, and these are the costs where, where these are for items that that uh, are very easily allocated to a specific crop. Uh, you 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 buy and apply fertilizer specifically for your cotton. You have ginning and and cotton harvesting expense specifically for a cotton. Uh, and you, you actually apply specific levels of fertilizer. We'll talk about some of these allocated costs here in just a minute. As you're entering the rest of these, pay particular attention to the units that, uh, uh, that we're asking for. Uh, when you're entering your fertilizer expense, fertilizer typically is applied in, in pounds per acre or maybe even hundredweight per acre. Uh, some of our herbicide expense can be uh, applied on a ounce per acre, gallon per acre, quart per acre, and we just want to make sure that whatever unit we use, that our price per unit corresponds to the, the unit that we entered. One thing I want to bring to your attention here is when we look at our bull weevil eradication, most of the state is, is simply in a, a maintenance zone nowadays and they've changed the, uh, the bull weevil eradication assessment to a per bale assessment. So um, 380 pounds, we'll call that uh, three quarters of a bale. And change the, uh, change the uh, unit to bale over there. And I think we're being assessed a buck and a half a bale. Another place that I want to change our units is in our cotton seed expense. Uh, uh, the new technology and everything that we're adding to those uh, to our, our cotton seed, we, we, we rarely see cotton seed uh, priced by the pound anymore. We're actually talking about specific seeds per acre or in this case thousands of seed per acre. 28? I think 28 is a, a pretty useful number. $1.75 per thousand seeds. All right, I see I got some more blank lines here if I need them, right, for something that's not listed here up above. Yes, if you've got some additional expenses or some expense categories that we haven't uh, covered for you, you've got some blank lines to, to enter some of that. Now we're down to some of these allocated expenses. Uh, these expenses aren't as easy to allocate to a specific crop. Um, diesel fuel. You, you buy fuel and you may be able to tell me exactly how much you want to use for a crop. Um, you, you may not have been that specific as you used it. Uh, but for example, if you bought 3,200 gallons of fuel last year and you farmed a total of 400 acres, you could just have the the spreadsheet calculate your your fuel usage which would be eight gallons per acre. That sounds reasonable. Let's put a cost on that. How about 210? That sounds good. Uh, I probably about a dollar and a quarter an acre for 
pickup fuel, pick and, up fuel. And four wheeler fuel and got you how do I do this repair and maintenance? You know, the last three years, I've averaged about $12,500 a, a year, I noticed on my tax return for this kind of stuff. The repairs vary from year to year, so so allocating that on a per acre basis uh, is probably makes good sense. So go ahead and uh, allocate your uh, 1250, $12,500 dollars uh, uh, average repair bill uh, over those 400 acres. Okay, now we get down here to your your uh, interest on your your credit line or your your operating note at the at the bank. Um, here we want you to put in the the interest that you're paying on your operating line or your credit line and this budget is going to create or is going to calculate your interest for it's going to calculate a full year's interest on one half of your variable cost for the year. Okay, all right. So that means I'm making thirty-eight dollars and forty cents an acre over your variable cost. Okay. So right now it's cost your break-even price just to cover your your uh, your break-even price to cover just your variable cost is fifty-four cents a pound. All right. Well, what's this fixed cost stuff down here? Okay, these fixed costs are are largely non-cash costs, but they are legitimate economic costs uh, against your operation. When we're looking at machinery depreciation, what we are trying to do is allocate uh, a portion of the pur original purchase price less a salvage value that we spread out over the, your expected useful life of that machinery. Some people are inclined to put the the uh, IRS tax depreciation on that line and that tends to, to uh, overstate your annual depreciation. Um, another approach, people are, are tempted to put the principal portion of their machinery payments on that line and again both those strategies probably overstate your your depreciation expense. Okay, what's what's this uh, investment deal here? What do you mean? You've got a tremendous investment in your machinery line that you're using to farm cotton and to farm all of your crops. You're not kidding. And what we're trying to do is calculate uh, uh, the interest that that money invested in your machinery uh, could be earning if it was employed elsewhere. So that, that is an opportunity cost. Uh, those thousands of dollars of machinery invested could be allocated, could be uh, applied somewhere else. So that interest that you're not making from it is, is in fact a, a, a cost to your operation. Okay, Bill, what's the, what are these other items down here? Many operators will treat, like to treat their salaried labor as a fixed cost, because they know year in, year out, they are going to pay X dollars for, for salaried employees. Um, so that, that's fixed to them, it's not gonna change. We've also got under management or owner operator, that's a fee that we could be paying you for your, for your effort and your, your, the management you're providing to your, op, uh, to your operation. These are non-cash costs, this is what you, uh, uh, we, but we do need to pay you for your time and effort. The allocated establishment cost is where we would put our amortized cost for establishing a nut or fruit tree orchard or for establishing a perennial forage crop such as alfalfa or Oh, you sedan. mean like on the Jones place where I got that alfalfa patch over there. That's correct. Uh, you, you'd allocate the, the cost of establishing that alfalfa co uh, field over, over possibly five to seven years. The next couple lines are some ownership costs or some land costs. Uh, we said in this case we're renting the acres from uh, from the Smith family, so our land cost is is uh, limited to just the cash rent. The other two categories uh, would be property taxes or or the farm insurance if the whole farm, the liability insurance if if this was uh, owned owned farm ground. And again, we've got a couple extra lines there for some other fixed costs. 
So now you're telling me with all this, I'm losing $16.15 an acre. That is correct. Our, our, our costs exceed our, our anticipated revenue uh, by $16 an acre. You can see our total fixed cost of $54. Our total cost of production is $311 per acre. And, and we are losing $16 uh, an acre. And if you scroll down, you'll see a green sensitivity table. And over there on the left-hand side where you see 100%, that is 100% of your expected production that you said was 380 pounds. You can see that that gives us a 68 cent break-even price to cover our total cost. And then that sensitivity table looks uh, at what your break-even price would be if you only got 90% or 75% of that 380 pounds, you can see what impact that would have on your break-even prices. Or if your yield was greater than 380, you could see uh, uh, what impact and how much lower that would bring your break-even price. All right. Well, now that I've got all these numbers in here, what do I, what do, I do next? Well, you'd probably like to print these things out so you could uh, uh, sit down at your desk and study them. There is a print your budget button at the top right hand side of your screen. If you click that, you're going to get some messages. Wow, what's this? This has, uh, uh, it makes you think that you're going to lose some data. Nothing is going to be lost. Uh, if you tell it to cancel, um, it's going to create a separate budget tab for you at the bottom of the screen down here. There, that's it right there. You're looking at it. Um, you can come back to that budget later and, and look at it and adjust it as necessary. If you just tell it OK, um, it will not create a second budget tab for you, but it will still print your data out and that data will still exist in the dry land cotton budget for you. Sure enough, it's all still there, just like we put it in. I noticed that if I have any questions uh, down at the bottom of these budgets, there's usually a name and a telephone number. Another thing I can do, I noticed, is I can click on the area of the state that I live in and I can find contact information for the district economist for that area. The other thing, if I can't remember any of that, I can always go back to the crop and livestock budget page. And right here, it tells me I can email budgets at tamu.edu.